Okay, in this presentation we are going to look at computing Laplace transforms from first principles. So essentially what we have to do here, this is just a general uh, rule for uh, calculating Laplace transforms. We have some function f of t and we get the Laplace transform of that. What we do is integrate from 0 to plus infinity of uh, what we do here is e to the minus st times f of t. That is essentially the Laplace transform. Okay, so essentially whatever you have, multiply it by e to the minus st, and then work it out. Okay, it's always helpful to remember if a function can be expressed as in terms of exponential functions, which is uh, not unusual. Okay, so. Now this particular exercise asks us to, uh, from first principle, first from first principles, calculate the Laplace transform of t plus two, and, and essentially I'm sort of actually showing the answer here. It actually is one over s squared plus two over s. Okay. So I'm actually going to just reverse the order. I'm going to sort of take it. I'm going to do the uh, just actually call it two plus t instead of uh, t plus two. Okay. So just down here, essentially what I'm going to do here, so that is actually the first step. This is f of t here. So essentially what we have to do is work all of this out. So what I'm going to do actually is break it up into two parts. Uh, 2 times e to the minus st and then t times e to the minus st, okay? And integrate them both separately. So I'm going to break up the calculation into two parts and see how we get on from there. I'm going to start with the easiest part first, okay? So, um, 2 times the integral of e to the minus st, okay, now here remember that s is just a constant, okay, so it could just be treated as a constant. So essentially we're, this is in the form e to the at, and where a is equal to minus s, and the integral of that is e to the at over a, okay. So in this case, the integral of this is e to the minus st over minus s, and we have the lower and upper boundary of the integral, of the definite integral, zero and infinity. And also we're just going to multiply our outcome by two. Okay, so now let's just sort of get into shot there. It's important to recall the following. These will help you. I mean, if you don't have these uh, sort of uh, clear in your mind, you're going straight into trouble, okay? e to the minus infinity is 0, and e to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Anything to the power of 0 should equal 1, so that one should be fairly obvious. But this one actually is, uh, it's not actually, sorry, it's not equal to 1, but it's, uh, it's essentially equal to 1. Exactly. It's, it, it, well, it is equal to 1, but it's a sort of more convention of mathematics than something that could be proven obviously. So just remember those two. So if you got those two down, that helps a lot. So, we're going to evaluate it for both, okay? So e to the minus so e to the minus st over minus s. We're going to let t equal to infinity. So s times infinity, or minus s times infinity is just minus infinity, okay? So that that's essentially minus s times infinity becomes minus infinity. So e to the minus infinity over minus s. That essentially all becomes zero there, okay? And e to the minus st, where we let t equal to 0, is e to the power of 0, which is 1, okay? So we have, and watch the signs, we have a uh, minus here, and we have a minus down here, the signs cancel out, minus minus, the signs cancel out to plus 1 over s, and just as a remark, don't forget this, so it's 2 over s, okay? So that's the first part, now we're going on to the second part of the integral, and we're just going to piece that together, so I'm going to bring back 2 over s later on at the end, okay? So this is the second one now. So this is the second integral. It's all it's done very in a very similar way, but essentially what we have to do here is use integration by parts. Okay? Now if you're not familiar with integration by parts and the Lippet rule, the L I P E T rule, I suggest you actually go back and look over that first because I'm not going to uh, fully do integration by parts here. I'm just going to give the bare basics of it. We're going to let u equal to t. Therefore, du over dt is equal to 1. That means du is equal to dt. Okay. We're going to let dv equal to e to the minus st dt. Okay. Uh, that means v, which is the integral of dv, just integrate that out. And we've got e to the minus st over minus s. 
which I sort of pointed out earlier on. Okay. So what we do there is piece all of that back together. Let me just go to the next page. So this is the integration by parts when we actually the, put everything back together. We found that t was uh, u, we let u is equal to t. We let, uh, found that v was the integral of dv, which is e to the minus 2s over minus s. Okay, we have that minus there. Now, I sort of, uh, we're going to integrate uh, v du here. But what I'm going to do is actually just is sort of, uh, the integral is 1 over minus s. So I'm just going to sort of filter that out uh, before the integral, okay? Just to make life a little bit easy for ourselves, okay? Also, I'm not going to put in the uh, upper and lower. I'm just going to see, treat this as an indefinite integral for the time being. And then at the end, when I'm ready, just sort of revert to the definite integral, calculating the outcome of that. So e to the minus st, uh, again, we've actually uh, seen that outcome already. It is e, e to the minus st over minus s, okay? Just watch out for the signs. Minus times uh, 1 over minus s becomes plus 1 over s, but we're going to have a minus s, just a, a triple negative, essentially. Okay, so when we evaluate, simplify this as much as we can, we get t to the e to the minus s, t over minus s, minus 1 over s squared, which is plus 1 over s times well, uh, this part here, where I filtered this out here, e to the minus st. Okay. Now, again, we're using our rules here of e to the minus infinity is uh, 1 and e to, uh, sorry, e to the minus infinity is 0 and e to the 0 is 1. Okay. So when we let t is equal to infinity, we have t infinity times 0. That's a bit of a, like, the, you know, this is sort of where these uh, get a bit tough. The infinity times 0 is 0. Okay. Um, so 0 minus 1 over s squared times 0. Essentially 0 minus 0, okay? So as far as the infinity component is concerned, everything just turns to 0. It just turns everything to 0, okay? So the second part is minus, well, we let t equal to 0. So we have t equals 0 here. They just, this, this, this entire term becomes 0, okay? But... Uh, we have minus 1 over s squared times e to the minus st, which is 1 over s squared times e to the 0. e to the 0 is equal to 1. So this works out as 1 over s squared. Uh, minus, mi minus 1 over s squared. And just remember, we have these negatives here, these minus signs. So we actually end up at 1 over s squared, okay, which is the answer to 2. So just piece it all together. There we go, the Laplace transform of 2 plus t, and that, that's 2, and that's t, is 2 over s plus 1 over s squared, okay? Now, I just revert back to one thing here. What is the crux? What is the hard bit that you have to remember? As well as keeping track of all, of all these minus signs, okay, keeping track of those, that, that is the the key thing you have to remember, okay? So we'll leave it there.